In this part of the lesson, we're going to be looking at a couple of techniques used to select single cells on a worksheet, which of course is one of the more common things you're likely to be doing in Excel VBA. I'm going to start by opening up the file that I've downloaded and extracted. There isn't any code in here, so you won't be asked to enable content. And all it contains is a simple list of the 10 most profitable films, or at least they were the most profitable films at the time I created the list. The first job I'd like to perform is to write a subroutine which selects and then colours in the cell, which contains the name of the best film in this list, which obviously, clearly, is The Avengers, but do feel free to disagree. Um, as long as you don't pick Titanic, I think you'll be safe. So what we'll do next is open up the Visual Basic Editor, and of course we can insert a module into the project in the standard way, and I'm going to create a new subroutine called Select by Cell Reference. Again, it's entirely up to you as to whether you use the underscores to represent spaces or just omit the spaces altogether. So select by cell reference. And the first technique we'll use to select a single cell is going to use the range property. And of course, this is something you've already seen before in the previous module in this course. You can't really get very far in Excel VBA without learning how to refer to a range. So let's begin by pressing control and space and then look for the range property in the list. And then if I open a set of parentheses having typed that in, I'll see that the tooltip that appears indicates that I can reference, well, actually two cells, although we're only going to reference the first cell. You'll hopefully notice that cell 2 is wrapped in square brackets, indicating that that parameter is optional. So to reference cell B6, which of course is the cell containing the name of the best film in this list, we can open some double quotes, type in the cell reference, close the double quotes, close the parentheses, and then I'd like to apply the select method to the range that I've just referenced. So I can type in a full stop and then type in the beginning of the word select. And once it's highlighted in the list, press enter to select it. Once a range has been selected, we can reference it using a special keyword called active cell. So if I give myself a new blank line, press control and space at the beginning of the next statement, look for the word active cell, and then type in a full stop. What I'd now like to do is modify the interior color of this cell so I can look for the interior property. And then from there, I can refer to the color property, still spelt without a U for those in the UK. And then I want to assign a different color to it. So I'm going to type in an equal sign and then look for the color called RGB Lime, which is a lovely lurid shade of green. So rather than type that in myself, I can press control and space, look for RGB Lime. Um, feel free to go with a different colour if you prefer, and um, there are plenty to choose from with some lovely flowery names. I'm going to go with RGB Lime. Having done this, I can then run the subroutine, which I can do in a variety of ways, as we've already seen. I'm going to click my Run button on my standard toolbar, and then if I switch back to the Excel window, I should see that that beautiful shade of green has now been used to highlight cell B6, and of course that cell B6 has also been selected. It's worthwhile mentioning briefly at this point that there is a slightly quicker way to reference a cell using its cell reference. It's a somewhat old fashioned technique that's limited in use these days, but if I can quickly show you by commenting out the range b6.select statement, and then on the next line, I can write a cell reference wrapped up inside a set of square brackets. If I then close the square brackets and type in a full stop, Sadly, there's no IntelliSense, but this is a reference to cell B6 in a much shorter way than using the range property. Were I to run this subroutine again, in fact, what I'll do is step through this while you can see in the background what's happening. So if I select a different cell first and then bring back the Visual Basic Editor, I can use the F8 key to step through. And you'll see that when I hit this line and press F8, that it does indeed select cell B6. The color change will just be the same, of course, of RGB Lime. So it's slightly quicker to type this, of course, but you don't get any help with the IntelliSense. And when we want to do some more sophisticated things, some more sophisticated references to cells, this isn't particularly helpful. This is mentioned mainly in case you see it in other people's code. Um, in preference, although it's more to type in, use the range property. It's the more modern technique. The next technique we're going to use to select a single cell uses the cells property to reference a cell by its row and column number. So let's create a new subroutine to do that. I'm going to create a sub called select by row and column number. I'm, I'm already wishing that I picked a shorter subroutine name, but there we go. Select by row and column number. This time we'll pick the cell which contains the name of the worst film in the list, which I think, as I already indicated, is clearly Titanic, which is cell B3. 
So that cell belongs to row number three and column number two on the worksheet. So switching back to the Visual Basic Editor, I can begin my statement this time by referring to the cells property. Now it is possible to use the cells property by itself to reference all of the cells on the entire worksheet. So I can use cells as an object and say cells.select or cells.clear or anything else that I would like to do to every cell on the worksheet. But I'd like to narrow this down to one single specific cell. So after typing in the cells keyword, I can open some parentheses and hopefully you can see the tooltip asks me to provide a row index or a row number and a column index or column number. So the row index, as we discussed, was row number three and follow that with a comma and column number two. Close the parentheses. Sadly, again, when I enter a full stop or a period, it doesn't present me with the IntelliSense, but I know that I can apply the select method to a range object, so I can do the same thing here to cells. What I'll do now, once again, once the cell has been selected, I can reference it using the active cell keyword, so I can use the active cell property to return a reference to the range that is active. I can then refer to the interior property and the color property, and I can make this equal to, let's go with RGB hot pink this time. Having done all that, I can run this subroutine now, again using a variety of techniques as we've discussed in previous lessons. If I switch back to the Excel window, we can see that Titanic has been selected and coloured in this beautiful shade of pink. At this point, you could move on to the extra practice session on this page to get a bit more practice at referring to single cells using the cell reference or a row and column number. Alternatively, you could simply move on to the next part of this lesson, which talks about how to reference multiple cells at the same time.